As dogfights raged all over Europe in the Second World War, thousands of pilots from both sides would be shot down and captured. As the Allies pushed back against the Germans, many Allied POWs were able to be liberated and escape their captors. What we rarely hear about, however, is any story that ever involves a German prisoner of war escaping their captivity in this time. In this video, however, we will look at a legendary German ace who would be the only Axis pilot in World War II to escape from Allied captivity and return to fight for the Luftwaffe. When flying a plane in combat, the last thing you ever want to see in your aircraft is bullet holes. Another place, however, that I never want to see holes is actually my belt, thanks to the sponsor of this video, Anson Belt and Buckle. As you guys may have seen before, Anson Belt hooked me up with some of their holeless belts and I absolutely love them. Thanks to their brilliant design, they actually don't have any holes and instead use a locking mechanism to ensure you get a perfect fit every time. In addition, because you aren't constantly stabbing the holes in your strap, Anson belts actually look brand new for much longer than traditional belts. You can even interchange buckles and straps to create whatever sort of style you are looking for. Honestly, I can tell you that I wear mine all the time and it's one of my favorite products I own. So if you're looking for a perfect fit every time and a belt that looks new for years, use the link in the description and go check out their awesome selection of belts today. Thanks again to Anson Belt and Buckle, and without further ado, enjoy. Franz von Vera was actually born in Switzerland, but found himself a loyal member of the nation of Germany and would join the Luftwaffe to become a fighter pilot in 1936. He was known as a playboy as he rose through training and would end up being placed in JG3, fighting against the French shortly after the Second World War began. Here, flying a Messerschmitt BF-109, he would see some early success as he claimed his first aerial victory by taking down an RAF hurricane on the 20th of May in 1940. A few days later, he took down a trio of French aircraft, bringing his total to four and increasing his confidence greatly. His streak would continue after the Germans swept through France when he found himself taking part in the Battle of Britain. Here, he became an ace when he destroyed a Spitfire on August 25th. He also would take down two more Hurricanes shortly after, bringing his total tally to seven enemy kills. Von Vetta was on top of the world during this moment, as he was making a name for himself and had seen nothing but victory thus far. That, however, was about to change. On September 5th, as the fighting over the Channel and over England continued to grow more gruesome, he found himself locked in a dogfight near Kent. In this fray, his BF-109 would take heavy damage from a Spitfire, and very quickly the German ace knew that he would not be able to make it back home. He located an open field on British soil and was able to bring his fighter down for a forced belly landing. Shortly after exiting his aircraft, he would be taken prisoner by an unarmed cook of a nearby unit. For the next month, he was heavily interrogated by British officials and actually very quickly became a nuisance for his captors. He tried escaping through various ways and actually succeeded twice in doing so, but was recaptured shortly after each time. Once, because he spoke fluent English, he even made it all the way to the cockpit of a British fighter in an attempted escape after telling the mechanic that he was supposed to take it on a test flight. But again, he was captured before he was able to start the engine. In January of 1941, after being a prisoner for a few months, Von Vetta and a large group of other German POWs were sent across the Atlantic to Canada to be held for the time being. It was believed that here they would be easier to guard and would not be freed if the Germans ended up invading Britain. After the voyage to Canada, he was on board a train to Ontario and decided to attempt yet another escape. Here, with a few other prisoners, he actually leapt out of the window of the moving train and began to put distance behind him, making a run for the nearest woods. All of the other seven prisoners who made it out of the train with him were soon recaptured, but Von Vetta was actually not noticed and thus was not pursued. 
After traveling more than 30 miles on foot, he crossed a frozen river in the dead of winter and then found himself finally in his destination of New York in the United States. The US actually at this time in 1941 was still neutral in the war and thus a German prisoner like himself was actually relatively safe there. After turning himself in, the United States simply charged him with entering the country illegally and the local German council paid his bail. After this, he actually gained national attention when he told a very embellished version of his story to the local press. The German pilot was then helped over the border into Mexico by fellow Germans, where he would make an even more incredible journey. In order to avoid recapture, his trip from there became quite complex. He traveled down through South America into Brazil and then boarded a ship into Spain and then on to Rome until eventually he made his way back to his beloved Germany. In April when he finally arrived, he was hailed as a national hero. Adolf Hitler himself presented von Vetta with the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross and then the German pilot also provided valuable intel to German officials about RAF interrogation techniques. Ironically, when he told his countrymen of how well he was treated as a prisoner, this actually caused the Germans to improve their own treatment of Allied POWs in order to match that of their adversaries. Following this, he would be sent back to the front lines yet again, this time against the Russians on the Eastern Front with JG-53. Without missing a beat, he resumed his success in the sky to match his newly found fame. He actually took down an impressive 13 enemy aircraft just in the month of July of 1941, bringing his total to 21 victories and on pace to become one of the top scorers in the Luftwaffe. And that really brings into focus one of the most incredible aspects of this entire story, which is that all of this actually happened in about 14 total months. This man, Franz von Vera, actually had more adventure in this short time period than most people could ever dream about. When we look at it, we can see that he scored his first kill in May of 1940, and then just a few months after that, he would actually be shot down, forced to make an emergency landing, and captured by the enemy, which right there would already be more than enough uh, adventure for most people. But then he even goes so much farther. He tries to escape from British captivity multiple times, succeeds. He then takes a boat across the Atlantic Ocean into Canada. Now he's in North America. From Canada, he escapes on board a moving train, goes down to New York, crosses into another country. From there, he goes to Mexico, down to South America, another continent, and then from South America to Spain, and then Rome in Italy, and then back to Germany. And all of this is in just about five or six months. So he covers a total of three continents there, and then he's moved back to Russia, another continent, in the span of just about 12 total months. So in this time period, he has lived so much and it is truly incredible to think about that and it's one of the most mind-boggling facts of this entire story. As the fighting continued in early August of 1941, JG-53 would be moved to the Netherlands to transition into the newly developed BF-109 F4 model. Unfortunately for the German ace, while on a practice flight in this new aircraft, Franz von Vera would experience engine failure and his Messerschmitt would crash into the ocean. This legendary German ace was presumed dead and his body was never found. He was 27 years old. If you enjoyed this video, then take a look at this list right here. These are my Patreon supporters and they help make this video possible. If you would like your name here at the end of all of my videos and access to awesome bonus content, then please use the link in the description and check out my Patreon to support my hard work. Thanks for watching, please click subscribe, and I'll see you next time.